Coming up on DTNS, cyber espionage goes IRL, a new attempt at a social network you won't be angry with, and are online ads worthless? This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, November 7th, 2019. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. From Oakland, California, I'm Justin Robert Young. And I'm Roger Chang, the show's producer. I uh, was having a good time talking about Ford versus Ferrari. We were talking a little bit about Olympia in Washington. Uh, that's all on Good Day Internet. If you want to find out what we talk about there and become part of the crew, join us. Patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Sources tell the Wall Street Journal that Google is considering changes to its political ads policy and has held internal meetings on the subject, maybe sharing information with staff later this week. Google's employees speaking to the journal suggested that the changes may involve restrictions on what audiences ad buyers can target. Tumblr added a group chats feature that they can have up to uh, that can have up to 100 members. Be, uh, you can be created and managed by any user and be publicly viewable. Chat owners can invite and remove members, delight, uh, delete messages, and any Tumblr user can report a chat for violating Tumblr's hate speech policy or community guidelines. Group chats will surface in Tumblr searches along with other content. Uber and Waymo agreed in a legal settlement over those trade secrets that were allegedly shared by former employee Anthony Lewandowski to have an independent expert review Uber's autonomous car code. Well, the results are in. In a quarterly securities filing, Uber disclosed that as a result of that independent review, Uber would either need to pay Waymo a license fee or re-engineer its software, which Uber says in the filing, quote, could limit or delay our production of autonomous vehicle technologies. Microsoft HoloLens 2 has begun shipping. The headset cost $3,500 and is being delivered to customers who pre-ordered in France, Germany, Ireland, New Zealand, the U.S., Australia, and the United Kingdom. HoloLens 2 is lighter and more comfortable, supposedly, and has an increased field of view from 34 to 52 degrees, along with full gesture tracking. Google announced it open sourced the software for its phone based VR cardboard, saying it shipped more than 15 million cardboard units, but has seen usage decline over time. Google says it will keep adding new features to the open source project and add an SDK package for the Unity game engine. Google previously published the technical specific specifications for the cardboard VR viewer. Back in October, Google discontinued its Daydream VR platform. And YouTube announced an updated design meant to maximize room to the videos and their titles, plus other new features, including an add to queue option on the desktop and a desktop version of YouTube's stop suggesting feature. The redesign also adds higher resolution previews and gives more space to the channel icons beneath each video. Wouldn't Let's it be nice? We, 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 could, we can have longer titles now. There's more screen real estate. Oh, if only we were still on YouTube. Well, I guess we are still on YouTube. So sure, we yeah. can. Yeah, the collective we. Anyway. We, the yeah. royal we. Yes. Let's talk about the death of advertising, which will now ruin the internet. Justin. Mm. Reporting live from the death of the internet, <laughs> Tom. The correspondent published an article today entitled "The New Dot Com Bubble Is Here." It's called online advertising, end quote. The argument walks the reader through the evolution of online ads, starting with a 2003 meeting between then-president of Viacom being horrified that Google's Larry Page, Eric Schmidt, and Sergey Brin believed that ad value could and was being measured at all. Fast forward to 2018, when more than $273 billion are spent on digital ads globally according to research firm eMarketer, with the majority going to Google and Facebook. Reporters Jesse Frederick and Morris Martin tracked down data and economic experts who had worked on a variety of big tech companies over the last decade, plus coming to the eventual conclusion that the math men, quote unquote, don't really know how to accurately track consumer behavior. Yeah, the, uh, the this is there are a lot of really good things to pull out of this. It's, it's, it's a well done piece. Uh, the quote that I want to pull out particularly is most advertising platforms can't tell clients whether their algorithms are just increasing, increasing the selection effect or whether they're bringing in people who wouldn't 
have come in otherwise. Uh, there's a there's a great example in there about eBay uh, saying we're making so much money off of our ads, but look at the conversion rate and and the amount of money we can attribute to each click. And an economist was brought in and said, well, yeah, but you're also the top search result. Like if you didn't pay for that ad, you'd still be at the top of the page. Let's do some A-B testing. And they found that paying for the ads didn't really boost things that much, that if they stopped paying for the ads, that they would still bring in a lot of clicks and, and make a lot of sales. So I I disagree a little bit with this headline and with a, somewhat with the uh, conclusion, because what they're saying is for a long time, People didn't understand whether advertising worked, but now they've been sold a bill of goods that it does. But guess what? Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't work as much as they think it does. <laughs> and the conclusion I have a problem with is, and that's going to stop people from spending on advertising? If it didn't stop them back in the television and radio days, it's no reason it would stop them from doing it now. Absolutely. Like there's at least some level of accountability here in a world where there was absolutely none. You had no guarantee that there were uh, uh, any eyeballs on your ad. Now, where we could see a bubble is fraud on the back end or some kind of increased understanding that these are that you are deliberately wasting your money. Not necessarily that they're that they're trackable, but they're wasted. Yeah, I mean, the 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 the. The uh, what you said, Tom, about eBay being at the top of search results and maybe spending money that it did not, in fact, need to burn to get the same result. That's interesting. You would think that a company would 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 go heavier R and D into figuring out how to spend less money instead of just spending money that some uh, you know department at some point was created to have, and there's a budget and you got to get through it through the year type thing, which I think is. I think that is in general what the article is going for here is we have set up this process based on a lot of data and you know a lot of economic experts and when you really sit down and talk with a lot of these folks it turns out that there are a lot of differing opinions on what's really going on and there are a lot of really smart people who are simply working for very high wages at companies like this because somebody at the company heard once that you had to do it this way Correlation is not causation is a big lesson pulled out of this this piece from the correspondent. Uh, and I'll, I'll leave it at this. I'll end it with this. Uh, the disruption to advertising is going to come from someone who can appear to verify better than what we get from Google and Facebook, because that's what Google and Facebook did to the existing yep. advertising industry. AMD announced the Ryzen Threadripper 3970X and 3960X processors built on the Zen 2 architecture, offering 15% better performance per clock. The 3970X features 32 cores and 64 threads running at a stock 3.7 gigahertz frequency with turbo speeds of up to 4.5 gigahertz. The 3960X offers 24 cores and 48 threads running at 3.8 gigahertz with a turbo speed up to 4.5 gigahertz as well. Both processors have 128 megabytes of L3 cache, 88 PCIe 4.0 lanes for I.O., and a 280-watt TDP. The processors will run on the new TRX40 platform with support for quad-channel memory. The 3970X costs... $1,999 and the 3960X costs $1,399 at launching at November 25th. I, I will not take away from Roger Chang's enthusiasm here. Roger, <laughs> I know I know you're probably the most excited of all four of us. Uh, this, mean, this means a lot. I mean, other than the fact that you get 88 PCIe lanes, although once you go through the mass, it whittles down to like 64, 68. Um, this really proves that AMD is in it to really win it. I mean, they don't just want to be the crown on the uh, power versus va the value proposition. They want to be like top dog, like just pure performance. And uh, they're doing really well, so much so that Intel recently, as we know, a couple of months ago, cut their prices in half because they were feeling the heat. Yeah. So if someone would like to buy Roger one of these cards, uh, let us know. Feedback at dailytechnewshow.com. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Give Roger a card. T-Mobile will activate its 5G network in the U.S. on December 6th of uh, this year. 200 million customers will have access at launch with 5,000 cities and towns covered by the end of the year. At least they might. 
We'll get to that in a second. T-Mobile also plans to launch a $15 a month, two gigabyte plan and a $25 a month, five gigabyte plan. Each plan would get an additional 500 megabytes added each year for up to five years. There's a little bit of a loyalty, thank you. T-Mobile will also offer 5G service for free to first responders, so police, firefighter, EMTs, for a decade. And lastly, 10 million children, or 10 million low-income households with children, will get 100 <laughs> gigabytes of home broadband access a year and a mobile hotspot for free. But the children won't get that Wi-Fi unless... Those mean 15 U.S. attorneys general dropped their lawsuit trying to prevent the merger of T-Mobile and Sprint. Uh, that that trial starts on December 9th. It's not going to get resolved by December 6th, that's for sure. <laughs> so I'm a little curious how that's going to work, John Legere. But uh, T-Mobile really on the charm offensive here. You know, it's and, and I understand that you know T-Mobile's stance, whether or not it's true or partially true, is that well, we need the influx of of you know the combined company to be able to have the money to be able to provide these services. Sure. And and maybe maybe it's lip service and maybe maybe it's all true, but it's very hard to be like you know what we'll do. We'll throw in some uh, some some data to the firefighters. You know when they're trying to keep people <laughs> alive. But you know what. We're not going to do that if this merger doesn't go through. We don't care that much. We just yeah. want the merger to go through first. It's almost like bringing it up makes them look bad. Mm. Yeah. Well, and you know, next, what I've heard, and I'm ex uh, reporting exclusively, is uh, uh, internet for uh, wounded veteran dogs from uh, overseas <laughs> and uh, for newborn babies. Uh, you know, there's just a look, lot look. Of they won't have the network capacity to to cover all those firefighters if you don't approve the merger. That's exactly. All. And and they won't have the 5G to save this puppy in John Legere's office <laughs> unless you approve the merger. Right. I mean, we're not saying we're going to kill the puppy or anything I just, like I that. I just feel like they, it, it's, you kind of run the risk. And there are a lot of jokes going around about this today because, sure. yeah. again, it's just, you know, it's 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 dangling something in front of people being like, don't you want these cool things? Well, you better approve our merger. But, uh, but, it, but you run the risk also of being the company that promised something that then you took away. And 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 these are really nice well, it was things. The, uh, it was the 15 attorneys general that took it away, Sarah. That's that's the. Answer. Well, but you don't always remember the story that way, do you? Yeah, you remember no, it as T-Mobile said that they mm -hmm. were going to give kids the internet, and then they didn't. Poor kids. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I got something for the kids. It's a new attempt to solve social network concerns, and it's launched today. It's called Friended, and it's available for iOS. It lets you post one thing every eight hours. Responses to that thing are only sent to you and not posted publicly. So you can have a private one-on-one -on -one conversation with other users. Once you talk to someone, you can add them as a friend, and the app is free unless you want to post more than once every eight hours, which will cost you $4.99 a week. Wow. Paying gets you a few other features like being able to talk to folks near your location. I will say, as an intrepid reporter, I signed up for Friended before the show, and I just, on my watch, got an alert saying they think I'm a bot. What? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Really? What kind of alert is that? It just says... Uh, uh, Hello from Friended, you're not real? For real? All right, it actually... <laughs> Oh, crap. I can't bring it up. This now. is breaking news. It's I breaking. signed up with no problem. Uh, it just wants an email address because it's going to authenticate you by email. It's only for iOS. They do say they have an Android app under development, but you just use the same phone all the time and it's it's going to assume you're fine. And uh, it seems to be full of people who are lonely. That's yeah. what I have found so far. Because kind of like how TikTok just gives you stuff. You don't follow people. It just gives yeah. you stuff. That's what Friend does. It just gives you stuff. And the stuff I'm seeing are like, man, just sitting at home alone. Wish I had a friend. Like, okay, is this stuff that the company created to make it seem like you were connecting or is it just that there's a lot of lonely people that have downloaded Friend today? Yeah, the problem with this, uh, the, the, the idea that... Okay, you know, you use Instagram as the most obvious example. Like everybody's life is so glamorous. Everybody looks so good. You know, filters have you know made it a, a beauty unattainable, and 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 it's and it's screwing with the rest of us uh, because you, yes, you might be that lonely person being like, "Wish I had a friend right now," and I really don't. So I understand what Friended is doing by saying we're going to take away the likes, we're going to take away you know the the all of the glamour that kind of. Is 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 potentially screened with people's heads by saying, okay, if Sarah posts something, 
anyone might see it, but as soon as Justin responds to me, it's just between us. So there's yeah. no kind of outside influence yeah, yeah. going on. You're not, you know, posturing for other people. But the problem is, is that the company has, uh, has said, yeah, there's, you know, there's a lot of social network loneliness and people uh, needing to connect. And we think that this is the better way to do it. It might be in certain instances, but I think you're going to get a lot more lonely people using it. And if nobody responds to your post, then that's not helping. That's it's almost worse in a way because you're just maybe looking for like just the one friend to talk to you. I don't I don't really see what this is solving unless it's a little bit more of a hey, you want to talk about something really heavy? This would be the social network to do it. And maybe friended will become something like that. It's kind of a dating light app too, right? It's like, oh, I just want to have a conversation. Maybe it'll lead somewhere, maybe it won't. Like I could just, see that being a pivot for them at some point. Just just to give you a sense, when you log on, they ask you a prompt. And so for me, it was, what takes what's something that takes you a lot, a long time? And I said, answer emails. And apparently that's the exact thing a bot would say. <laughs> oh. Just I just had to take the kindness pledge. Uh, this is like the fifth time I've opened the app today. And it uh, said, you, you agree, you agree to be nice to people. If not, say no and delete the app. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the, who's the guy who's like, nope, I will not take the nope. kindness pledge. Well, Bye. I mean, yeah, by the way, we didn't ask. <laughs> um, so do you still have the app? Like, I still have the app, yes. Good, 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 good question. I, yeah. Uh, speaking of kindness, this is a weird one. Overnight in the U.S., some mobile customers from pretty much all major carriers reported receiving text messages that appear to have originally been sent on or around February 14th, which is Valentine's Day in the U.S. of this year. So almost a year ago, the texts all appear to have never been originally received. So the send never happened. Nobody received them, not getting it twice. These are new texts, except for the fact that they're just extremely old and there's a lot of context missing. iPhone and Android users all reported receiving the delayed messages. T-Mobile, Sprint, AT&T, and Verizon also mentioned, as were some regional U.S. carriers, some carriers in Canada, even a few uh, Google Voice users. So somewhat of a widespread issue that there doesn't seem to be a very good uh, answer for a Sprint spokesperson said that it was a maintenance update last night that caused the error. T-Mobile said the issue stemmed from a third party vendor and offered no information uh, uh, further and, and, and the other carriers haven't responded either because they don't want to or they don't know. Uh, as with any instance of delayed messaging, there are upsetting instances of texts uh, from, you know, referring to people who may have died. Uh, who, who you, who, There's no who, mayhem about it. There, there are texts from people who are dead. There well, are texts I'm just saying, in general, there are a lot of reasons you could get a text from somebody no, who no, no, actually there, sent you a text in February where it would be right. extremely no, no, upsetting. No, that's what I'm saying. Being, this is upsetting because these people are now dead, and they weren't when they sent the text message. Or, so. or it's somebody that you, you've fallen out of favor with, and it is, it, it's not a <laughs> well, text message that, that is you want to get. That is another example, correct. Yeah. 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 But there, there are verifiable examples of someone like, I got a message from my sister and she died three months ago. Like this message was sent when she was alive, but it didn't yeah. get to me till now. Yeah. Uh, there are there are some examples of messages where someone said, oh, mom's doing great today uh, because she was on February 14th, but she died since then. Like this, this is upsetting to people. I, you know, I'm not saying there needs to be damages or anything, but this is weird. And it it's, is. it's really unusual that we're, seeing it spread across platforms. This seems like like a, a, a SMS wide issue. And these explanations from Sprint and T Mobile don't only explain why the messages might have got delivered. They don't expect they don't explain why they were never sent in the first place. Right? Like if if no one exactly. ever received them on February yeah. 15th, why did that why did that not happen back then? Right. And even, even assuming that the Valentine's Day thing is just pure coincidence, which seems a little weird, but let's just assume that it sure. is. Could yeah, be. we don't have a lot of other uh, answers for something that confused a lot of people. And like you mentioned, I mean, with with you know, in some cases, very upsetting results. Yeah, I think we need more information about this, and it'll keep our oh. our ears open. Hey, folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to DailyTechHeadlines.com. The U.S. Justice Department has charged two former Twitter employees with spying for Saudi Arabia. Former Twitter media partnership manager and U.S. citizen Ahmed Abu Ma, I'm sorry, Ahmed 
Abuamo was arrested in Seattle Tuesday. He allegedly spied on the accounts of three users on behalf of the Saudi government and is being charged with falsifying an invoice to obstruct an FBI investigation. He received a payment. He changed the invoice to say the payment was for something that it wasn't. That's that's what he's getting charged with. Saudi citizen and former Twitter site reliability engineer Ali Azabara is accused of accessing the personal information of more than 6,000 Twitter accounts on behalf of the Saudi government. Twitter actually discovered this and confronted Alzabara on December 2nd, at least the accessing part of it. Uh, and he said he did it out of curiosity. He was placed on leave and left for Saudi Arabia the next day. In the criminal complaint filed by the FBI, Twitter employees are alleged to have been cultivated by Saudi government as early as 2014 to be used as sources of information. And Twitter told the Washington Post that it restricts access to sensitive account information to a limited group of trained and vetted employees. Now, it doesn't explain how Azabaro or uh, 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 Abu Amo were able to get in there. Were they trained and vetted? We don't know. Um, but this is a really interesting turn of events where it's not the company be having a cyber attack. It's not the company having loose privacy policies that are manipulated for nefarious ends. It's cultivating, you know, human human resources uh, and 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 using humans to exfiltrate information. Yeah, you know, it's funny that we even lump this in as cyber espionage because really this is just espionage. Good old fashioned involves, espionage. That involves a cyber element. Uh, this has happened from the dawning of uh, uh, intelligence units uh, in, in the major uh, you know, modern civilization. Uh, what is interesting about this in particular is that the Middle East, and specifically Saudi Arabia, Qatar, uh, Israel, obviously, have very active, very aggressive divisions that often do the kind of traditional cyber attacks, you know, exploits, stuff like that. But uh, this is old school. This is this is '80s. This is this is the 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 Americans, the FX series level of how you get information from sensitive uh, areas. Yeah, I, I mean, like you say, it's it's straight out of the Americans. Uh, it's it's cultivating human assets, uh, and and I think uh, that is the part that I understand why Twitter is not going to say more than boilerplate about this because from this Washington Post report, it sounds like Twitter confronted Al Zabara because they caught him doing something he wasn't supposed to do. So maybe yeah. he wasn't vetted. Maybe he stole somebody's access or, or something like that, or went in on somebody else's terminal. They caught him, they suspended him, and then he bolted because Twitter yeah. probably then, I don't know, may have gone to the FBI to say, we've got an employee that did something suspicious here. Yeah, the out of curiosity uh, reasoning is that's a tough one to swallow. Uh, mm -hmm. More than six thousand accounts. I don't know. Maybe you're really curious, but <laughs> but uh, and then yeah, and the fact that uh, placed on leave probably means that the company was like, well, you weren't supposed to be doing that. Um, and then uh, the fact that he um, got on a plane, uh, assuming it was a plane, um, is is uh, this is all. This is a, it's a it's a story like you said Justin it's a story that it's going to be we're probably going to hear a lot more about this and it's probably happening at a lot of companies. In well, fact, question, I'll go right? ahead and I'll go ahead and bet that it is. Well, I mean it's it certainly you know if you are all major uh, uh, industrial powers in the modern world are trying to spy on each other. Like this is just a constant that is happening. Uh, it has now, the focus that we have had more recently is the very easy ways you can do it. Like you too can have some kind of foreign intelligence unit if you have a basement, enough computers and people that are willing to uh, uh, try to, you know, spear fish and, and do the, the, the garden variety ways that you can gain credentials and access computer systems. What is fascinating about Twitter and and you would have to assume Google, Facebook, any organization that tracks a tremendous amount of data, many of which or much of it location data, is they now are probably richer targets than some government entities because this is real time, softer target, and all you have to do is convince somebody these assets i mean I, I you know these are are i assume younger people because a lot of the staffs at these companies are on the younger side 
There's a lot of things that are very attractive to, to, to folks like that, especially when you're coming from a regime. Saudi Arabia obviously has very different values when it comes to personal freedoms and uh, more government controls over the lives of their citizens. There are, there are ways in which they can make these, these guys or their families either an offer to benefit or a fear of reprisal. Yeah, and, and, and to, to wrap it up here, data is the new whatever, oil, gold, <laughs> supplies. like Oily gold, yeah. gold bars covered in oil. Data is the thing everybody wants. And if you hold a lot of it, uh, you're going to be open to this this kind of uh, of espionage. It's the it's an industrial espionage. Bet I know what our show title suggestions will focus <laughs> on. Good stuff, guys. Hey, thanks everybody who participates in our subreddit. So many stories are surfaced every morning for the crew, and we thank you for it. You have good taste in tech. Submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Also, join in on the conversation in our Discord. Happening right now, but it happens 24 hours a day. You can link there at patreon.com slash DTNS. All right, let's check in with Chris Christensen, the amateur traveler, who has a warning for travelers who take selfies. This is Chris Christensen from Amateur Traveler with another tip We're not hearing in Travel anything. Minute. So. As you know, selfies have had a big impact on the travel industry, but one woman recently went too far with her desire to get that perfect selfie according to an article from CNN Travel. She was spotted climbing up on the balcony railing on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship as they entered a port in the country of Haiti. And when they were notified of it, Royal Caribbean threw her off the ship. Metaphorically speaking, that is. <laughs> and not only that, but she has been banned for life from that cruise line. So when you're thinking about taking your selfies do so responsibly. I'm Chris Christensen from Amateur Traveler. That's good advice, Chris Christensen. <laughs> and I'm very glad you clarified that they just took her off the ship. That it right. her she just can't go back on the ship. She is safe on land. Or on right, another ship, I suppose. Let's check out the mailbag. Let's do it. Alan, who's written in before from the cornfields of southern Illinois, says, as you all know, I work in the manufacturing tech industry. You identified that the driver... In the Uber story that we talked about yesterday, the Uber, the autonomous Uber car that had struck and killed a pedestrian, although there was a safety driver behind the wheel. Uh, Alan says, the operator to me, uh, you identified that the driver, which is, which is what Alan calls the operator, was at fault. Alan says, I agree completely, but in my industry, identifying that as a root cause use not accept is not acceptable to mitigate the risk. We're expected to craft a solution that bypasses the operator from the issue. So do you see that happening with driverless cars because you just can't depend on a driver? Well, yeah, Alan, uh, I, th I think you hit on the, the question, right? Because at that point, that's what Uber was trying to develop, right? They're saying, we want to get to a point where we bypass that operator. That's our, that's our goal. Uh, but we want to test to see if there's something, you know, we don't want to just uh, deploy it. That's irresponsible. So let's put it out there and test whether this works and see if there's any flaws in it. Now that could be dangerous. So let's put a human driver in the middle to, you know, be the safety net. And, and Al and I had a great conversation back and forth on email about this. Essentially, she was the safety net and the safety net failed. Now, when the safety net fails, that doesn't mean your design is wrong, uh, but it does mean that you need better safety procedures for your further testing and development. Well, thanks, Alan, for the email, and also shout out to our patrons at our master and our grandmaster levels, including Jeff Wilkes, Sonia Vining, and Tony Glass. Also, thanks to Justin Robert Young for being with us. It's Thursday. We always love Thursdays because Justin's on the mm. show. What have you been doing since last Thursday? Well, I'll tell you what. I, I, I uh, would like to direct everybody to go ahead and listen to my politics podcast, Politics, 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 uh, because uh, I think that we're in a, a, a pretty good stretch of episodes lately. And if you uh, enjoy a more, uh, you know, I, I would, uh, you know, it's weird because I obviously have this kind of left of center personality. So I like to think that I like to make jokes, but the feedback that I've been getting on these episodes lately is that it's, it's kind of more of a, a, a sober take than you hear in the mainstream media about politics, politics with uh, an interest, uh, of, that is not about inf inflammation, I guess, uh, would be a way to put it, but go ahead and check it out. Politics, yeah. politics, politics.com. It's the ibuprofen of political discourse. 
anti-inflammatory. <laughs> yeah. uh, I really liked your, your talk with Andrew Heaton yesterday. That was great. Uh, yeah. Fantastic, folks. Go check yeah. it out. You, this, yeah, you, this whole one was on the, the rise and fall of Beto O'Rourke uh, compared yeah. uh, the the ascendancy of his Senate campaign with the absolute disaster that was his presidential campaign that ended last Friday. Well, folks, uh, we have new Patreon rewards right here. Uh, some of you have been a little confused about the cookbook. It's there at patreon.com slash DTNS. You click on posts, you scroll down, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling to November 1st, because if you turned off your email notifications or if it went to spam, you probably didn't get the notification, and then you can get it. Uh, but we also have a new thing. We're just going to mail it. You know what? We won't make you scroll at all. We'll just mail you a holiday card with art from Len Peralta uh, if you sign up by November, I think it's November 28th, it says on the site, but uh, sign up and uh, give us your address. If you, if you don't feel comfortable giving us your address, that's fine, but we can't mail you a card, obviously, if you don't do that. So uh, do all of that and more at patreon.com slash DTNS. Feedback from you, we want it. We want you to send us email. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We're also live. Join us if we can, Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. That's 2130 UTC. And you can find out more and tell a friend, dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with Allison Chara to talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>